Hello, everyone. Today we have PMP that I haven't seen for a long time. Mm -hmm. And our my internet actually, as usually, it's disaster, but I will change this soon. PMP, first of all, I want to, I have like very strange questions today, but I want to okay. ask you. I want to ask you this since i haven't been following much lately the situation in iraq um mm -hmm. i have some awareness that there there's been a visit of pope and there there are things behind the scenes happening so i would like to ask you do you think this rv is it looks like it's gonna happen pretty much very soon and does it look like RV will be first or the true value of precious metals will be announced first? What announcement do you think will be first? Uh, well, I think because of the countries uh, printing out, well, a lot of the bigger countries anyways, printing out uh, so much of their currency it would make sense to me that gold and silver would go first. Now that's just common sense, but in case, you know, like we talked about before, we're not exactly living in, um, you know, common sense world anymore, you know, so there's no telling one way or another. Now, the thing about Iraq, I, I keep telling people stay grounded on this because if they do come out with the RI or an RV, whatever you want to call it, whatever they come up with, if they make that announcement, that's good. But there are other indicators that we see out there that can show you that the currency is going to go up in value. One is a stronger GDP, a stronger economy. They are really literally just starting over from scratch, to be honest with you. Um, so, you know, they have nowhere to go but up as long as the, the, the stability in the Middle East. And uh, that's what I'm watching for. That's what I'm hoping for. So we just need Kurdistan and, of course, uh, Iraq to uh or baghdad to just get this agreement ironed out you know you got these political blocks we see it here in our own country i mean you got one group of politicians who are trying to resist or you know they were yeah putting hurdles in, in a way of what could be done and that's the same thing you have here you have these iranian-backed politicians over there so mm -hmm. if they could get out of the way these people could get uh you know i think they're in a good position in my opinion if, if we don't see an RI or an RV, now I say that hesitantly because they're like, baby said there's no RI or no RV. I, I never said that. What I'm saying is if there isn't one right away. There are other indicators that we can look for that will show us that the value will go up. And I think in increments. So okay. that's, that's, I watched all of it. So Pimpi, you also mentioned about uh, Iran's currency. So do you think this is a good move to purchase some currency like from Iran? Or rather, like Iraqi dinar. What what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, given the relationship that Biden has with China, and China's relationship with Iran, and the O Biden administration when they were in office, their relationship with uh, Iraq or yeah, Iran, and then uh, given John Kerry's, you know, his wife is somehow related to the mullahs in Iran. And so, you know, I just think uh, most likely what you'll see happen probably first would be, uh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to make that assumption. Uh, I, I just, you're going to see them lift, they're already doing it. They lift this thing off so many people, freed up about $3.5 billion of people that were, uh, had their assets frozen. So that's not surprising. It's a first step in the right direction. Uh, this helps the Molas at least uh, get by while they uh, figure out what's going on with this Iran nuclear deal. I really don't think they're interested either party in doing it. They're just going to let them build it. That's what they wanted to do anyways. They'll just use it as an excuse, in my opinion. But we, we don't want that. But for stability-wise, if China tells Joe Biden to lift the sanctions on uh, Iran, he's going to do it. And once he does that, that opens up the economy. There's nothing there restricting the economy. So the currency will go up in value. And it'll go up faster than most likely Iraq. The reason is the only thing that's holding their currency back, I'm talking about Iran, is the fact that their economy is suffering from sanctions. So if you lift the sanctions, then what's in its way? Where Iraq, you know, there's more involved to it. So it's 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 it could go either way. But in my opinion, uh, you're probably going to see Iran. You know, uh, you're not going to see no major RV or RI, but you can see it jump up pretty good in value at the very least. In my opinion, double because it's really super low. So the, again, that's just my opinion, but. Uh, it's most likely to go before the Iraqi dinar, 
I think what we're waiting for with Dinar is uh, his budget to be um, voted on, get it out in, uh, or bound in Baghdad, get it out there, get it. Uh, you're going to see most likely in the in the budget, you're going to see a, a change in the Iraqi Dinar exchange. I think they realize that it hurt the poor people, but you're going to see a change. And, you know, people are expecting some huge RIRV in his budget. I'm saying, well, let's just. Think grounded. I'm thinking most likely what to do is they'll put it back to where the rate was before. So 1,190 dinars, you know, is where it is for now. But I do think it's going to go up in increments as time goes on. As the oil prices go up, uh, the deficit goes down. They're able to invest more money in the private sectors. You're going to see the economy really boom. Less people on government assistance, more people paying taxes. This is exactly what you want. So, Pimpi, I know this is just speculation now, but... What would you say is the most realistic exchange rate when this happens? For it just depends on what are you talking about as far as if an RV or, or, or an RI is it called? Is that what it is? It's yeah. most likely an RI, which is a reinstatement, all right? Because the rate used to be 322. Okay, so an RV would be like they just did, but they did it where they devalued instead of increase in value. That's a that's a you know a revaluation of the currency, so it's it, if we're being honest, it's called a RI, a reinstatement. Um, is Iraq in position to pull off a rate, you know, that high? Given the fact that there's so many Iraqi dinars out there, I mean, you know, anything is possible, but you know, I'm dealing with the probabilities. They have no money in country, none. Their their money's gone. It's been stolen. So they have to repeat, repatriate the money back. So, uh, you know, this, it's, it's a very possible, very possible it could come out, you know. See, again, when I say it this way, I, I'm hesitant because people always assume that all of a sudden I'm against it. It's not I'm against it. So, you know, more realistically, don't be surprised if you see come up five cents, 10 cents. It's better than where it is. You still make a ton of money. Five cents, 10 cents. People I know, they want the $3, $5, $15. It, it, I, I just can't imagine it coming out that high that quick because it will affect the economy. You know what I mean? Yeah. They do need the purchasing power. They need to rebuild their country. But at the same time, right now, they're just trying to pull their butt out of the ground right now. It's kind of hard to do. So once uh, they get there, and I think it's going to take for a few months, then anything is possible after that. But uh, I think uh, to see it at that rate, yeah, I mean, I think more realistic, you know, you see it come out of five cents, 10 cents. And so the vast majority of people turn it in just because they've been waiting for so long. That I call that a sneaky rate. And then, you know, people hold on. You're going to see them. They'll change it a little bit later on. But to have that 55 trillion dinars out there right now. So if you think about it realistically, if you do a $3 rate, I mean, that's, you know, $3 trillion. Do they have $3 trillion USD dollars? No, they don't. But uh, that's why I tell people, well, I think you're just looking at this wrong. Every country is going to be dealing with their own People in each country, like us, we deal with our banks here. Mm -hmm. Our banks then deal with uh, Federal Reserve. Yeah. The Federal Reserve deals with Iraq on what they do with the exchange. So will our country hold on to them while they just rebound slowly and this slowly but slowly uh, turn money back over in exchange? Or do they hold it in the reserves? I mean, there's a lot of avenues they can take. So it just depends on which way they're going to go. It sounds like I'm kicking it around. But the truth of the matter is there's a, there's a lot of different routes that can happen. I think you're going to see it go up in increments a little bit at a time. That's just my opinion. As far as an RI is concerned, I think we're a little bit off from an RI happening. They're just not in position to do that right at this moment. Not at the moment, but it's possible. Okay. So I would like to ask you this now, Pimpi. I haven't been checking silver and gold much lately, although I have awareness the silver prices went down a little and gold too. You know, I was wondering, actually, do you think that what will be first to skyrocket in the price, silver or gold? Because I thought, you know, I thought that gold doesn't have to necessarily be the first precious metal to skyrocket, right? Price wise. What do you think? No, you can, you can we see some decoupling happening is what we saw. I mean, it has, the truth of the matter is, although it's been taking some dips, actually it's been slowly climbing back up. Gold right now is at 1730. So remember, they had it almost down to 1500. And now already it's back up there to around 1730 and it's up $10 today. 
$10.30 real quick. And silver is back up at $26.33. So they're slowly creeping up. But silver keeps wanting to take off. And every time it gets remotely close to $27, they spoof it and knock it down. Yeah. So when I tell people the squeeze, you guys help with the squeeze. People go, is it still working? You know, because we don't really hear anything in the news. Yeah, it's working. I, I did a video early today showing it. In, in February, towards the end of February, we're curious at how many people would take physical possessions off the comics of their silver. And I think uh, between the uh, about midway or end of February to where we are today, 22.5 million ounces have been removed out of the comics. That's crazy. You know, I mean, that's a lot, a lot of silver in a short period of time. And so uh, that's why I tell you, see there, what more do you guys need? You've seen it's working. When people are afraid to extend their contracts out for another 90 days because they're not sure if the silver is going to be there when the contract's up. So they're not taking a risk. Nobody is. As long as they keep depleting their inventory, which they are, people are. Now, some people might say, well, that's not very much compared to how much they have. No, it is again because we've never seen this much get removed. So the prices right now on gold and silver are being held down. What people are doing is, in my opinion, is they're artificially pumping up cryptocurrencies to keep people distracted from physical silvers and uh by doing that you know this thing could have been done a lot much quicker but even so worldwide per London comics here in, in the united states i mean all of them are taking some pretty good hits as far as inventory now keep that in mind with the fact that for the past three years we're supposed to have equivalent to around what say a, a, a billion i think it is a billion ounces of silver is what we have said for the past three years and haven't been able to produce that. Now you add in coronavirus, the mines have been shut down. You know what I mean? And it, just a lot of things that are a lot of indicators that say that silver should be way up and it's not yet. They're doing every trick in the book to keep, to keep it down. So which one's going to skyrocket first? I think you're going to see... Silver, it's just there's too many people squeezing it right now around the world. Silver's going to go up. Yeah. I think what happens, you start to see it run. And if it starts to run, they're going to have to revalue it. So what that does is for people who are new to this. So you see silver is around 26, 30 right now. If it starts hitting around a 30, 31, 32, it gets anywhere near 35. And you see gold anywhere up there around 19 again or even closer to 2000. Mm -hmm. What they'll do is to stop people from buying it on the market. What they'll do is they'll revalue it. So they'll say something like, well, we'll let gold be now, you know, yeah. 5,000 ounce and silver will be $60 an ounce. I'm just using numbers just because, you know, $60 an ounce. And what that does is now it takes poor people out of this because poor people, well, I can't afford $60 an ounce for silver, not including premiums. So part of your group that's taking the physical off the market is no longer participating. Yeah. The other people are like, oh, yeah, I'll only pay $20 for my silver. It's now 60 so now they flood the market because they want to sell while they're up ahead in fear that it might not go or it might go down again. And I keep telling people, no, keep holding, keep squeezing. That's exactly what they'll do. So you'll see a jump like that happen. They'll try to find a way to slow it down or stop it dead in its tracks just by teasing people with, a, you know, a nice little jump in value. So they'll part with their physical silver. I say don't hold on to it if they can. It will go up. Mm -hmm. I think within 10 years, you're going to see silver pass gold as far as overall value. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. We're seeing copper right now. I think it's what, 3,500% increase over the past six months or so. I might be slightly off on that. But that's because if we're going to this Green New Deal with Joe Biden, everything that is um, used takes silver and copper. Mm -hmm. And that's why people are going, oh, look at Elon Musk bought, bought uh, Bitcoin. I go, no. Do you realize how much gold and silver he's buying because he needs that for his vehicles? What he's doing is distracting you. That's what he's doing. Yeah. You know, if he can keep the silver down that low and he needs to keep a cube. He has a warehouse, by the way. People don't know he has a warehouse that he stores up all silver in. So he does buy physical metals. It's probably worth it to him. I'm sure they sat around a calculator saying, look, if we put $1.5 billion into Bitcoin and everybody runs over there and we put X amount of money into silver in the long run, when silver prices go up, we're going to save 10 times the amount you've just put into Bitcoin. It's worth the risk. And, and then to add, add to it, of course, they, in a short period of time, that $1.5 made them a billion dollars because of the rise of the value of Bitcoin. So it's a smart tactic. It's a smart way to keep people away from physical 
precious metals. And again, you don't want paper. We want physical. So if you can, just keep buying it where you can. So thank you, Pinky. I, I would like to ask you now this. Money metals exchange. This is actually mm -hmm. a little bit like personal question as well. And I'm sure there are some people who will be watching then they might be in similar position. So let's say um, someone has silver and gold in their possession, but is not, but would like to store it with them. So let's use my example. I have some silver stored with them in their storage house with money metals exchange and some I have with me, okay? So if I would like to store everything like the one I have with me, do they allow this? Do they allow people to like send it to them and put in the storage? Yes. They do, yes. okay, okay. Yep. They'll help you. I think I think if I'm not mistaken, they actually pay to have uh, pay to have it shipped over there to help you out. So they'll ship it over there for you. Okay. Um, but I don't don't quote me on that. But money metals. This is one of the reasons why I love dealing with it because they are very you know user friendly, so to speak, as a company. They accommodate their clients very well. That's why I tell people not really customers or clients. But you know, if you come back to my company, you've been there more than once. You're now a client, not a customer. That means you know you're more valuable to me. And so um, yeah, and they have two separate vaults. One they keep for the inventory that they sell in retail. But the other, they keep for the client, so they don't mix their inventory, which is very important because this is what Comics says. So if you're storing your silver there and they're selling it at, what's that, uh, 100 ounces for every one, and they're short, well, guess who's butt out? You know what I mean? You are. They'll just say, look, we're going to force you to sell your silver. We'll settle at cash. You know what I mean? They'll pay cash instead of trying to turn around and find silver to replace it. It's going to be 10 times higher than what they got it for. So you don't want that. You want the physical silver. So yeah, if you want, if you have something at home and you have something there and you want to add to it, just let them know, then they'll uh, take care of you. Okay. That's very good to know because I know some people will feel more safe that they don't have it, you know, with them. Um, or like in my case, like I will be moving. And this is another question, Pimpy. If we can talk about this, because you did this on your channel, there was this video with the owner of Money Metals Exchange, and he was walking people through the website, and there is um, information about states in the United States and the tax rates. So there are some states that um, if they ship like to California, we have to pay tax on it. But there are some states that have like no tax or it's like very low taxation. So um, it's on their website. People can find it, right? Yeah. So when you go to the Money Meadows website, they actually have all kinds of goodies. There's educational stuff. There's, you know, they do podcasts. I try to replay them on my channel so that people can use them if you didn't know about this. Um, they have. So if you look at the website, I'll just kind of walk you through this. You don't have to actually have it up, but. For those of you who are interested, go to moneymetals.com. So they have these tabs. the silver, gold, other specials, you know, news, resources, IRA programs. So all you have to do is just scroll across there uh, to see a drop-down menu, and you can see uh, what's down below and see if any of these things uh, appeal to you. So, um, you know, right here under the one that says secure storage, okay. you know, you can click that one there in there and get all the news you want to know about the like it's fully segregated silver and gold storage. You know what I mean? So it is extremely low fees. I was looking around by the way. And that's the one thing about money metals. They're always super competitive and I love it. So, I mean, people go, you wouldn't do this challenge on, on a video. I was like, why wouldn't I? I understand they're not the cheapest, cheapest, but they're second, if not the cheapest, the second most cheapest. I mean, as far as value is concerned, it's a great deal. But on here they have, um, news and resources you can go to there and they have all kinds of things on here uh precious metals podcast educational center money metals insider which is really good this is where you get a lot of the information on legislation uh you know the, the sound money index is what you're talking about state laws so if you go to their website and the drop down menus under news or resources and then you go over to where it says sound money index and it says state law mm -hmm. Okay, so you scroll down on there and it has all the different states. Just click what state you want to read about and it tells you. Again, this okay. is a big part of what, Stephen's not just a CEO of the company, he's also very actively involved when it comes to legislation. 
very actively involved. And if you get part of the newsletter and you want to be part of it, I encourage you to do so because he will send out and keep you informed about what's going on in your states. Some of these people are trying to do away with capital gains, which is important for us. You know what I mean? If we didn't have to pay capital gains tax, then there's no taxes. Yes. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and in some states now, I think it's there's three of them, f- four, um, have uh, passed laws now recognizing, once again, a gold and silver as money. So you could pay off your debts. Oh, and, wow. And do, you, do you remember what states? That's interesting. Yeah, I... Uh, Yikes. You can just um, use it. You can just use it with the current uh, rate, right? Like a currency. Yeah, I just use it like a currency, but wow. at its current value, obviously. So if you know if somebody wants to sell it, I'm just making this up. So it says I want to buy my car. You don't want to sell my car. You go, okay, sure. I, I give you like you know four ounces of gold for it, and they take it. You can just do it. I mean, most people could do that anyways, but to do it in a legal fashion, to be able to walk into a business and use it as money is important. And that's what's going on right now. States are now allowing people to use precious metals as money that's good that's very you know if you have the right kind of yeah if you have a good holding that goes up in value and if you want to buy a home just use your precious metals or buy the home you know there's some places that will allow that i paid some of my construction people i paid them off in silver you know they preferred that so i got a good deal in the beginning but they know it's going to go up in value so no problem that was good for me you know (laughs) excellent so pimpy can we mention before we end today again the um the codes when people buy for the first time and they use your name and then there is another thing for the returning customers if you can just say this i would appreciate yeah sure so sure so if you're a first time buyer, if you go to money metals website moneymetalsexchange.com if you're a first time buyer in puerto rico or here in the united states and you spend more than a hundred dollars just use promo code pimpy and you will get p-i-m-p-y you will get a free half ounce of silver. Now return buyers, if you spend more than $500, there's no promo code now. So if you spend more than $500, they give you a quarter ounce of silver. So that's just their way again, the same thank you. So oh. anytime you can get free precious metals. <laughs> one second, one second. So for the returning customers, you don't need to use any promo co- code anymore. It's automatic? Nope. nope. Automatically. If you spend more than $500, you get a quarter ounce of silver. That's nice. Yes, I see. Anytime you can get free anything, precious metals, I want to know about it. You know, so it's a good deal. Pimpy, good to see you. You look great. Good Thank things, you. Good things are coming. Thank you for. for yeah, I really think so. <laughs> no, we'll 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 um we'll keep an eye on it. Look, when it comes to any of these foreign currencies, anything can happen at any time. I'm just trying to keep people grounded because there's so many rumors out there right now. Everybody's saying this date and that rate. I tell people, don't get caught up in that. There's people who have been dealing with this for 10, 15 years. They've heard it all. You know, and I understand why sometimes they're negative. But I tell the people, don't, you don't want that to happen. People start spending the money in their mind before they actually get it. Yeah. So what happens when it doesn't happen on that date? They're emotionally let down and they're emotionally drained. And they just yeah. lose faith. And I go, don't do that. That's yeah. why. Just stay grounded. If it happens, it happens. If it don't, well, then you know what? At least you didn't emotionally spend the money in your head. But it's so uh, true. Go, it's so true. As long I as, think, yeah. I'll say, I think, uh, you know, right now is truly a good time for precious metals. Um, it really is. I just, there's so much anticipation mm-hmm. about where gold and silver is going to go. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, where I was talking to my friend about, we were talking about rhodium, which is like, you know, Three, five years ago, I think it was, when it was like $500 an ounce. Now it's $23,000 an ounce, wow. 27000 It's crazy. It's a lot. I mean, in a short period of time. So when people go, oh, Pimpy, you know, if uh, my silver goes up to $4,000 an ounce, who's going to buy it from me? I said, well, money metals. They're buying rhodium right now. So, you know, they have, that's what they do. This is their company is to buy and sell. So, you know, there's going to be companies out there. They're going to buy it. You're going to have these rich elite people that have no problem paying a higher price yeah. once it starts to rock yeah. and roll. So don't yeah. be afraid to sell it if that's the case. Thank you, Pimpy. Thank you so no much. Problem. No problem. I'm so glad again I repeat this because if I would not come across you last year, I would not know even how to invest in precious metals. And it's so important right now. It really is. Yes. Thank you so it's, much. Thank you, Pimpy. No problem. Thank you for having me.